Hi, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I am Jess, and today we are going to be doing a end of July garden tour. Um, this is my vegetable garden in South Dakota. I live on in Western South Dakota, and I am a zone five. So just for your reference, um, this is going to be kind of a video journal for myself just to kind of see where my garden was this time of year. I do have a newborn, and so my garden isn't what I wanted it to be this year, um, but it is still doing well for <laughs> the amount of work that I was able to put into it, um, which was very limited. So I'm still pretty proud of it, um, but I did want to show you kind of what I got, and I know I have a few zucchini ready, of course, so I'm going to harvest some of that and see what else we can find. Um, but I thought this would just be a fun end of July wrap up. I haven't shown this garden yet to you guys this year. Um, we've just been so busy. And I just thought it'd be fun to kind of show you what's been going on. So this is an overview. I am standing on my garden porch. And if I actually show you, don't judge me, but we are going to be redoing all of this. And we had to redo our garage and driveway. So this kind of started getting used as a storage shed. Um, so that's why it's so chaotic. The neon colors were from the house owners before us. Um, we had some irrigation issues and so we've been trying to fix those in here and then i did set up a swing just so that we could have that but um otherwise that's about as far as we've gotten on our garden shed renovations i'm hoping this fall we can get that done and hopefully i'll be able to show you guys them we used to have taller skinnier raised beds two of them in each of these spots with a trellis in between connecting they were horrible soil rotting falling apart so we ended up scrapping those and building ourselves some new raised garden beds nothing grew in them um so i'm really happy we did though because it really does let us utilize a lot more garden space than it used to with those other ones then in here this is a bird netting that we have over our strawberry patch these are all june bearing strawberries i need to come in and thin it out it didn't produce as many strawberries as i was hoping it would this year so hopefully next year we can kind of give it a little TLC and get a few more strawberries out of it. In this first bed, it is pretty sad. We have a dahlia here um, that looks like it might finally be getting a flower. A mini pumpkin that has a few flowers on it, but I don't see any pumpkins actually forming yet. And then this was a garlic bed. And that's what was in here originally. <laughs> and I actually might pull these now because it's definitely time. Um, but my chickens came in here and ripped up everything. And so there's a big dirt spatch, patch there um, from them <laughs> destroying it. So we'll see what we actually got. Okay, well, that was possibly the saddest garlic harvest I've ever had. They're all pretty small bulbs. Some of them aren't even what I wouldn't even count as bulbs. They're just the starts. Um, I did not have very many. I feel like there's got to be more hidden that I started and just didn't come up this year. Uh, I'm not really sure. But what I'm probably going to do is just separate these and I'll plant them in September and just kind of start again. I have a good garlic harvest from last year and so I really should be fine and set through the year. But that was a little sad to pull these up. Wait all winter and pull up pretty much nothing but my garden bed did have some unwelcome visitors in it. So this first raised bed that we made last year has all bell peppers in it. So all of the peppers that you see here are bell peppers. I believe there are 14 bell peppers. I think they're all California red, maybe. Um, I planted all of the same kind, which probably wasn't the smartest decision, but that's what I ended up doing. I did lose a few. I had a few more. Um, so in these blank spots, they ended up dying though. We had a lot of hail, obviously some basil, some parsley, and lots of bell peppers, which I think are actually doing 
fairly well. So they're coming along. Last year I was able to produce enough bell peppers to almost make it the whole year for us, but bell peppers are one of those things where we would always use more. And so I had four bell pepper plants last year, planted 14 this year. I know that's quite a drastic increase, but I figure they're one of those foods that I will definitely use up if we do have an abundant harvest. So um, I planted a lot of them in hopes that we will get a lot of bell peppers to be able to use in our cooking and I'll be able to supply that for our house for the whole year. So in this bed along the fence, we have big green chili peppers and then serranos. And there's a few basil plants sprinkled in. These are purple bean plants, like green beans, but purple. And we grew these last year and they were awesome. I do not see any yet, I don't believe. I did see a few flowers starting though, so I'm going to hope that we get a few soon. No, you cause nothing but trouble. So I'm hoping we get a few soon. However, I did just see a video where you're not supposed to plant carrots and beans together uh, because I guess, you know, beans fix nitrogen into the soil and then the carrots will grow mostly green. So I'm hoping that's not going to be the case, but we do have a lot of carrot greens, so we'll see. Um, the chickens also took out a pepper plant here. So uh, we don't have a lot going on in this spot, but this green chili has a lot of flowers, but not a lot happening. I believe this one is actually ready. I'll probably pick this. It's a pretty good one. And then I believe we have another one that should be ready. So these plants look like they're going to produce quite a few. I'm hoping so anyway. Um, there's a lot of like flower buds, but not a lot of little peppers forming. These are the serranos. I do see a few peppers. They're actually probably getting close to being able to pick a few of them because they're only supposed to get about two or three inches tall anyhow. I feel like this pepper is getting just completely buried by the carrots, which I don't believe are ready yet. You know, they're still pretty small yet. So hopefully they'll grow a little bit bigger. This corner bed is actually becoming one of my favorites. So we have this really fun trellis going up to a birdhouse and we have these ginormous sunflowers that I did not realize they got this tall, but they are just whew, about to bloom, but they haven't quite yet. But I believe they're supposed to be a lemon yellow. And then I did plant some zinnias in here that I'll have to come in and probably cut. I could probably cut them now, actually. So I think I'm going to cut here. This guy. And we'll cut down here. It's really pretty. This one actually might be a queen lime. Did you drop it? Uh, maybe a red one. Uh, I'm not sure. I planted a whole lot of different ones in here and this is about all that came up. So I'm not really sure what we've got going on, but hopefully something soon. This is another mini pumpkin. Um, there was a lot of flower buds on it. So hopefully we'll get quite a few off of that. And then I have two massive zucchini plants in this little corner. I planted a whole bunch of zinnias behind this trellis as well, and none of them came up. So that was kind of disappointing. But it does look like this one has a mini pumpkin that's starting. So normally I like to pick my zucchini when they're about the size of a banana because it's a lot easier to make them into zoodles and there's no seeds forming yet. However, I was gone for a few days, and so I think there's going to be a few very large zucchini in here. This one's actually a fairly okay size, and I bet this one would be fine to make zoodles out of. Like that one. Might be a little bit bigger than I was hoping, but we'll come in and harvest him anyway.
So I have a lot of zucchini recipes that I can turn these into. What I really like to do is make a bunch of zucchini bread and muffins and then freeze them and they you can just pop them into the microwave for 30 seconds frozen and they just turn out to be a fairly decent breakfast. So I might do that with these, I might shred them up. Otherwise, if I have a lot of them and I am not able to process them, I'll probably just give some of these bigger ones to my chickens. Okay, it doesn't probably look like it because the zucchini have taken over, but this is another bed. And when I planted the zucchini, I did plant five individual sections of zucchini, which seems a little overkill for two people. But when I planted three zucchini last year, I got nothing. So I was really hoping to be successful on the zucchini, which I'm going to think I was. Uh, but we have a whole big section of zucchini, which I'm okay with. Anything that I can get, I'm going to be happy with. So looks like we have another one to harvest in here. So we'll grab him. Then of course I have a few more beans growing up this. This was supposed to be a dahlia as well, which I'm not sure how it got uncentered on its trellis. So I might have to fix him. This is a delphinium that looks like it's done blooming. So I might try to save the seeds here. They look like they're all ready. So I might need to come out with a bag and collect these. Some straw flowers that aren't blooming yet. This here is edamame. And I think I'm going to let them get a little bit bigger. It's a very fun plant. I just don't know if I'm going to get very many beans off of it. And only one of them came up when I planted a whole lot of them. So that was kind of a bummer, but we'll see if I get at least a snack worth. A few more sunflowers, lots of walking onions. That's the asparagus bed, chaotic, don't look there. And it's a little hard to see in this lighting, but this is our tomato bed. I am pretty sure I planted all Roma tomatoes. That's, I started them all from seed. <laughs> and I have some that look like this and some that look like that. So I have two plants of this, these circle ones, I think. So I have no idea what this one is, um, but I don't feel like they're Romas, so we'll see. But of course in here, I planted a bunch of basil. I have carrots growing down the middle. Um, I had cilantro on the outside that is starting to flower. And I'm just letting that flower for the bees. Um, it wasn't very tasty anyway, so I figured they can have a good snack. And that's what we got going on over here. I have only had two tomatoes ripen so far and I picked those, um, but otherwise, hopefully they'll all start ripening here pretty soon. It does seem pretty loaded. I do need a different trellis system. I think next year I'm going to get some cattle panels and put those in here or hog panels. I don't know what they're called, but um, hopefully that will make it a little bit better. And then in this last bed here, we have some sweet corn growing and it does look like we have a little bit coming in. So hopefully we'll have at least a meal of sweet corn. I'd love to freeze some corn and be able to use it throughout the year, but otherwise we will eat the sweet corn fresh. And then in the rest of the bed are a bunch of raspberries that have gone completely rogue. And then these are supposed to be pumpkins. And I was hoping that they would just kind of spill out over this direction, but I think they got pretty gotten by the squash beetles or bugs or whatever you call them. Um, and they kind of just went. So we'll see if they kind of recover and keep going, but they're not looking super hopeful. There's a few raspberries still left on here, so I might come and pick these. Hey babies, look. Connor, no. Okay, so this is my harvest tracker 
in my garden journal. I'll include a link up here if you haven't seen that video yet. I am on the second page. So I already threw the raspberries to the chicken, so I'm not gonna be documenting it, obviously. This is my one tomato that I've gotten out of my garden. The other one I fed to the chickens because it had um, blossom rot on the end. I have a scale. I can link it down in my description box if you guys are interested. I got it off of Amazon. So then what I'm going to do is just write down today's date and then um, all of the different types of things that I got. So the zucchini, green chili, I'll probably put the tomato on here just because. And so yeah, zucchini, tomato, and the green chilies. Then the date. And then I'm going to put that to zero. And then I will just take and weigh these. So we got 3.2 ounces of green chili. And what I'll probably do, because this isn't necessarily enough to can, because um, what I was wanting to do is made, make a homemade rotel with these. Uh, what I'm probably going to end up doing is chopping them up and I'll probably throw them in maybe a sauce or maybe we'll eat them with burgers or something like that. Um, but I'll probably just cook with these right away instead of preserving them. Same thing with this tomato. Or what I'll probably do is wait until it's completely ripe. There's a little edge that's a little bit more orange and then I'll throw it in a freezer bag and put it in my freezer and then wait until it is done. We're done with the harvest season and then I will actually can my tomatoes with the frozen tomatoes. Okay, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of math on this one to be able to get all of the zucchinis in here. <laughs> to me 3.8 3 pounds 8 ounces three pounds 10 ounces so now we're at six pounds and 16 ounces which is going to be seven pounds I'm running out of space. <laughs> Pretty much another four pounds. So that puts us at 11 pounds of zucchini. <laughs> um, and like I kind of mentioned out in the garden, when they get this big, I don't really love cooking with them, especially. Um, sometimes I feed them to my chickens. This is... This is much more of a manageable size um, for making zucchini versus this one. Um, but you can shred with this one. I would just scoop out the seeds before I cook with it. So this is what that looks like. My scale broke for these few, so I just kind of did my best guess. But that is what I'm going to write there. And then I will be writing the price on that corner. Um, this is the market value of what I would be paying at the grocery store at the start of the season. Uh, I'm guessing it's switched now that we're actually going and, you know, food's becoming a little bit more expensive. But that, those are the prices that I'm probably going to be using for just getting my market value analysis. Otherwise, this is my already full drawer of zucchini and we're going to be putting more into it. That is a very full crisper full of zucchini. So what I'll probably end up doing is a few of these will probably go to the chicken. Some will be made into muffins and I'll probably be making a few dinners with zucchini. I did also buy some cottage cheese to maybe make some lasagna. And if you slice them thin this way, you can make uh, lasagna noodles. So I might be trying a little of that. So that is all for today's garden video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It's a little bit different than my normal stuff, um, but I do want to start doing a lot more of the video journaling of my outdoor garden, uh, especially just because 
I feel like I get so devastated at the beginning of the year, especially in June when everything is getting hailed out and things aren't necessarily looking great and I put in a lot of effort into planting it and maybe you guys are also going through that, but then come July and August, everything just kind of explodes in my garden and so I feel like I just need to give myself a little bit of that hope to just stay with it because it will start going. Such as the zucchini, I honestly didn't think we would be even getting that much zucchini. I've already gotten more zucchini than I did off of my three plants, I'm pretty sure, last year. So that's exciting. Um, but more to come on that. I am really excited for these green chilies. We eat green chilies all the time and everything. They're just such a nice flavor, and so I'm really excited to be able to incorporate some of this into my cooking this year. And hopefully we'll get a lot of tomatoes and peppers to can into marinara sauce and maybe some homemade rotel and freeze our bell peppers so that we can use them all year round again. I will try to keep you guys posted. Thank you guys for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.